Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Morning, Beth. You're the first to pop up. Oh, there's Diane. Oh, it's raining in New York. Okay, could you send some down? I could use a little. I don't usually wish for rain, but I kind of need some. Got Chicago in the house. How you doing, Beth? You got a tough job. I'm only a little late. This is kind of our more normal time now. <laughs> Morning, Teresa. Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at oh, www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Uh, so, um, we've been having a little discussion. Uh, in in our company, <laughs> our tiny little company, uh, about disclaimers and um, uh, responsibility and, and, and that sort of thing. And my brain just doesn't go there. I, I, I'm all about just getting information out to pet owners. And I don't think of things from uh, the dark side of the room. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. Um, but, uh, you know, we're putting out this cooking course and there need to be disclaimers on it. And, you know, things like, you know, your results may vary from ours. Uh, we can't guarantee how your cooking is going to turn out because you may have never cooked anything in your life. You may not know how to boil water. Uh, your dog may not like it. Your dog, uh, you might feed something that doesn't agree with them and they might get diarrhea. Well, you know, I can't be responsible for how things turn out individually. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're trying to look at that and it's just a, it's a weird space for me. But one of the things, uh, and it came up in my, um, one of my consultations yesterday of, you know, what, what percentage of fat should I feed my dog? You know, what percentage of protein should be in the meals? Well, guess what guys, those are hard calculations. Have you ever tried to figure it out even for yourself? Like if you, um, if you're in Weight Watchers or some sort of weight loss program or you're doing paleo and you're, or, you know, whatever the diet is and you're trying to figure out what's the percentage of fat should be there, what percentage of protein should be there. The problem is, so if I give you a recipe and I say, okay, we're going to use one pound of 90% lean beef and we're going to use, you know, uh, eight ounces of butternut squash and two ounces of broccoli and an ounce of red pepper, you know, and I give you a list of 15 ingredients. Well, now you've got to go to a calculator online and figure out the vitamin mineral content of each one of those ingredients and the percent protein, the percent fat, the percent carbohydrate. And then you need to say, okay, well, the meat <clears throat> is 50% of the diet. Okay, now I've got to do the math of, okay, if my meat has, um, you know, 20 grams of fat and 50 grams of protein. But guess what? If you go to three different calculators online, you'll get three different answers to what's the percent of fat and protein and what the vitamin mineral breakdown is because every calculator is just a little different. So it is almost an impossibility. And even for the pet food companies who will put, you know, a guaranteed analysis on there, if you notice, it'll say a minimum of this percent of protein. They're not saying it is this percent of protein. It'll say a maximum of this percent of fat They're not, or a minimum, whichever. They're not giving you exact numbers because it's impossible. It's going to change every time you go buy that ingredient because no two batches are exactly the same. <clears throat> so I think if we took uh, four different packages of ground beef that's supposed to be 90% lean and we had them analyzed, they, you know, a true nutritional analysis in a lab, they wouldn't all come out exactly the same. 
there's going to be differences. So it's really impossible and it's hard calculations, hard calculations for somebody to sit and figure out. We, yes, we can put it in a computer program. For instance, the animal diet formulator that's out there. You know, if you put in 90% lean ground beef, well, yeah, they got their numbers from somewhere and they plug them into that computer program. But that doesn't mean that your batch is going to come out exactly like that batch. Um, so it's, it's really hard. And so this person yesterday, she was like, well, what's the maximum percentage of fat I should have in my dog's diet? And I said, it's going to be different for every dog. There is, there is no, I mean, for instance, if you're feeding a keto diet, you might have 70% fat in that diet. And it's perfectly healthy for a dog that needs a keto diet for whatever reason, whether it's seizures, cancer, whatever. So yeah, wish someone could calculate your amount of food at each meal. I look at my dogs and if one looks fat, then they get less that day. Yeah, exactly. Regulate. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, we do regulate our dogs a lot better. I do the same thing. I look at them and I feel them and, or I pick them up and I go, Oh, you're getting chubby. I better back off. Uh, but I don't sit there and figure out nutritional calculations on everything. Yeah. Math. I mean, it's, it's math that is, and why make yourself crazy with it? Why? You know, you can look at your pet and say, wow, he's doing really well. You can look at his lab work and say, wow, he's doing really well. Um, but you don't need to make yourself crazy trying to figure out the exact percentages of everything in the diet. It, it, it will make you crazy. And I know, uh, yeah, a lot a lot depends on their activity, their age, you know, and it's, it's going to be different for each individual. So like our Shana can't eat a lot of the things that the other dogs can eat, it just sets her into a tailspin. She just cannot eat the answer's food. It's higher in fat, doesn't work for her. Um, she can't even drink the goat milk, which isn't even high fat. It just doesn't work for her. But our other dogs do fine on it. So, uh, and even uh, all provide. Shana cannot eat the all provide beef. It's a little higher fat content than the, the poultry products. She can't eat the pork. It just sets her off. So she's got a very narrow uh, diet routine, which kind of bothers me because I like our guys to rotate and be all over the place. But um, don't make yourselves crazy. And it, you're exactly right, Carla. It's variety that balances out. And we don't think about, uh, like, for instance, uh, we don't think about that for our meals, like, you know, unless you're on a really strict diet for whatever reason, but that's not that common. Um, for instance, the interview that I did two summits ago with um, Emma Rutherford from England, Sweden, wherever, UK, somewhere over there. Um, Emma's awesome. She has, I think, 16 chihuahuas. And uh, she feeds her dogs at different times. Of the she has no set schedule because she doesn't want her dogs begging um, and being crazy. Like ours, they tell me when it's 5 o'clock. Uh, they know. Um, so she varies their feeding time. Some days she'll skip completely and let them do some fasting, which actually is very healthy for all of us, but we just can't get away with it around here. Um, and uh, she offers different things. She feeds them on these little boards and she puts different things on the boards and lets the dogs choose what they want or need. And just tons of rotation and variability in what she puts on those boards. And her dogs are so healthy and they live to old age and they do really well. And believe me, she is not sitting down calculating how much fat and protein they're getting. The dogs are really self-regulating and they do a really good job. So, that yeah, Sonia, it, it was an awesome interview, and, and plus Emma is just a funny and fun person. But um, it was it, I had never heard of anyone feeding that way, and so we don't have to make ourselves crazy. And you know, a lot of times when people are, are asking for a consultation, what they're looking for is a very specific tight recipe for their dog's specific problem. But if I give you one specific tight recipe for your dog's specific problem then they're not getting any rotation and they're not getting, you know, what happens if we have a little hole in that? What if you bought um, vegetables that were a little bit older and the vitamin B content was a little bit lower or when you cooked the vegetables, you didn't save the juice or, you know, the vitamin B content came down by 60% during the, the, the processing of the food, then it, you know, throw the calculator out the window because we just changed it. So uh, it is, pretty impossible. And that's why, it, for instance, in the yin and yang cookbook, you don't see in there, this has, you know, this much protein, this much fat, because it's going to depend on the specific product that you buy that week. And, you know, how it's processed, 
it, it's going to vary. Just like I, I can't tell you how much it costs per pound to make a particular meal because if somebody lives in New York City, that might be a lot more expensive than somebody who lives in Iowa, you know, or the UK. I, I, I can't answer those questions. So, uh, and in the um, What's for Dinner Dexter cookbook, which I don't even talk about anymore, uh, we did give sort of a ballpark fat, protein, and carbohydrate content in those diets, but we had to use a human website and look up each one of the ingredients in the diet and try to plug it in and try to figure it out. Um, and it's, believe me, very, very far from exact. Um, it's a rough estimate. And if you need to know that, you can use calculators to get a rough estimate, uh, but it's not exact, believe me, because it's going to vary with every batch that you buy. So, okay, I gotta get to the farm. I got lots of work to do, variety. Most people who try to help others on raw feeding don't mention variety. Yeah. You really, I, I, you know, anything. It's got rotation and mixing. So uh, make this part of your course. Still need a disclaimer, but students will better understand. Oh, believe me, this is part of the course. <laughs> yeah, we talk about it. So, okay, everybody have a wonderful day. Uh, blacksmith is coming today to trim feet, which are desperately... That's the only written in stone thing for today. I got a ton of work to do. Ton, 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 ton of work to do. Send pictures of the farm today? Yeah, we're kind of in a standstill. The um, electrician's finished up for the most part. I'll post some of those pictures. Um, but, mm, last week, not much happened. This week, not much happening. But in two weeks, we're getting siding. Our house will look more like a house. <laughs> All right, everybody have a wonderful day.